Hey guys, welcome to today's video. These are some sunscreen review. Today's sunscreen review is recorded a few months ago before the studio remodel, obviously. Um, but saving it for spring and summertime when everyone's looking for more sunscreen. So welcome to today's video. Appreciate the old background. I kind of miss it. So anyway, thank you guys. Hi, today we're doing the Biore Perfect Milk Sunscreen with SPF 50. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time to sponsor ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsb.com, join Patreon community, or click on the links below. Okay, so finally getting to review this one today, which is a really an interesting, unique sunscreen. Um, they say waterproof, waterproof sunblock provides long-lasting protection against UVA and UVB rays, effectively preventing premature skin aging and sunburn to keep skin at its healthiest and most vibrant. Ultra light formula spreads like a dream. Applying with ease without a sticky or heavy feeling for all of her protection within a few minutes of use. Apply evenly and liberally on exposed areas at least 30 minutes before sun exposure. So, okay, my first criteria is packaging. No issues with the packaging. It's kind of cute. And it's got the expiration date at the bottom too, which is convenient. Um, okay, in terms of denatured or drying types of alcohol, alcohol is the third ingredient in this one. Although it's not dr as drying as some other ones. Um, the fragrance, it does have fragrance. It's very light. It's not overwhelming. Uh, they describe it as a gentle white mugette fragrance. Um, so in my opinion, it's a light floral scent. It does dissipate after a little while. Um, but I prefer fragrance free, but anyway, uh, the manufacturing location for this one is Japan. So no issues with that. The SPF level with this one is SPF 50 plus. Uh, so it's great. Uh, 50 is great for the days you're outside a lot, exercising, going to the beach. 50 is great. 30 is the lowest I would recommend on a daily basis, but 50 and above is wonderful. Uh, the UVA protection factor for this one is a uh, PA with four pluses, which um, is the highest you can get, four pluses. Some are only three pluses. In some countries, it only goes up that high. Um, so based on the filters they use, I believe this has pretty good UV protection. Uh, it also includes UVA, uh, Uvenol A+, which is a good UVA ray absorber, and then also contains some mineral filters as well. Um, so let's talk about the filters in this one, and then we'll do the light test and the, uh, talk about the white cast. So we've got zinc oxide, UVA, UVB ray uh, reflector, uh, so very broad spectrum protection, highly stable, very gentle. Um, then we've got UVA-B filter octanoxate, which is a chemical, chemically elegant uh, filter. Uh, let's see, then we've got UVA filter Uvenol A+, great UVA protection, very photo stable. Uh, can be used in many countries, except for the US being one of them. Then we've got titanium dioxide, the UVA and UVB ray blocker, another good one. And then finally, we've got a UVA, UVB combo filter, tin sorbass, very photostable, absorbs the whole spectrum and uh, hardly deteriorates, very stable. Okay, in terms of the white cast, and then we'll do the uh, black light. So for this one, I found it does have a very, very light white cast. Uh, it's pretty easy to cover up with foundation or powder, although deeper skin tones will probably notice it a little bit more than I do. But if you're gonna apply a foundation over it, it has a tendency, it's not as, it's not as white casty as some other ones I've tried. So, and the texture is very, very liquidy. So now we're gonna do the uh, light test, so. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Very liquidy. Smooths over skin really easily though. So there we go. So I guess we'll see how this one looks under the black light with the uh, combo filters in it, but it does smooth over skin pretty easily. No issues with that. It's not um, unenjoyable to apply like some other ones that are thick or goopy. This one is uh, pretty nice to apply and kind of sets to a natural matte, slightly mattifying finish. So there we go. So we'll see what that looks like under the black light. 
Okay, so ease of use, so it's very easy. It smooths over skin really easily. I think that a little bit of, or a lot of denatured alcohol helps it smooth over skin and glide really easily. And uh, it sets to a finish that feels like you have nothing on, which is wonderful. Plays well with other products, no issues with pilling at all with this one in my experience, so. Okay, in terms of antioxidants and beneficial ingredients of this one, we've got two. We've got BHT, which is an antioxidant preservative combo, and then guess, can you guess it? Sodium hyaluronic, it's been in every single thing I reviewed for like the last like five months. It's in everything. It's never going to stop. I can't take it anymore. It's in everything. Let's get rid of it. It's just not that exciting of an ingredient. It's probably very cheap though. So, okay. In terms of acneogenic ingredients, it's not very friendly for acne prone skin in my opinion. It's more friendly for oilier skin that's not acne prone. So we've got dimethicone, hydrogenated polyisobutene, isopropyl palmate, talc, steric acid, ton of acneogenic ingredients. So keep that in mind if you're gonna use it. And you have very acne prone skin. Uh, in terms of animal testing, uh, Fiore is not cruelty free. Performance, I was very happy with this one. It did a great job protecting my skin from redness, tanning, freckling. Uh, it does feel a little bit drying towards the end of the day, probably because of that talc. And it does have a tendency to accentuate certain dry patches. Um, so certainly more geared towards oilier skin, but not acne prone skin friendly. Reapplication, this one's pretty easy. I will say it did make my eyes a little red by the end of the day. I didn't feel them tearing up or irritated, but they were a little bit red. Not sure if it's from the filters or from the fragrance or both. So that's, some people are always curious about that. Price, it's pretty affordable. 40 milliliters, 1.4 ounces, retails for about $15, making it decently affordable depending on how fast you go through it. So uh, with a 15 being a perfect score, I gave this one a nine. It's okay. A couple small changes and I'd like it a lot more, but um, the fragrance is always in there, so. Um, anyway, I'm interested in from you guys if you've got a chance to try this one. Super affordable, so it's always nice. But looking forward to, in the spring, trying some uh, more fragrance-free, more exciting sunscreen. So um, anyway, those are my thoughts on this one. Interested in if you guys have tried it or not. And I will see you guys more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.